Calculus BC, lesson 5.2, uh, the second part. So we've set up our MRAM, and we just have to get this typed out on the calculator. Um, by the way, you could even keep hitting second enter to do that. Uh, some sequence you could also find on the catalog, uh, the video for one point, uh, I'm sorry, for 5.1 uh, actually deals with the exact steps on how to do that just in case you need a refresher. But we're going to start with an x value of negative 1.875. We're going to end with an x value of 8.75. These are the x values that determine the heights. And uh, we'll have 0.25 here. And uh, you can see pretty quickly you'd get 319.75. Uh, so uh, that's the, the good news. It's uh, just letting the calculator do all of the heavy lifting. One word of uh, the rectangle approximation methods. The more rectangles you have, the more accurate your approximation will be. Let's move to page 3. I can determine definite integrals geometrically. And uh, even though you don't know how to evaluate a uh, definite integral, by hand just yet. We'll get to that next lesson. Let's take a look at just geometrically looking at this kind of a situation. So we've got this right here is our function y equals x minus 1. That's slope intercept form of a line. You can see we're going to uh, start with a, a y value at negative 1. That's your y intercept. And then, of course, we're going to go up one and right one. So we'll go up one step, go right one step. We'll go up one step and go right. Here's a, a two. Uh, we're also going to go up one more step and go right over here. So you can see more or less this is really where we're going. If x is equal to 3, your y value would be 2. And uh, this is what you have. When you're trying to figure this out, uh, what I want you to look for are familiar geometrical shapes. I hope you're seeing triangles here. We're not going to do an RAM or an LRAM. We're going to find the real net area here. Remember, an integral is really finding net area. And, uh, you know, for my first triangle, You know, that's underneath the x-axis. So that's going to be negative area. So it's one-half base times height. Uh, technically, we could say that our base is 1. Our height actually would be negative 1. Our y value would be negative 1. Uh, so it doesn't take you too long to see that that's going to just work out to negative 1 half. Um, so this is our yellow triangle. Uh, we can take a look at our green triangle as well. And you can say, well, look at that. We've got a base of 2. Actually, we've got a height of 2, if you look at that. Uh, so we'd say 1 half a base of 2 times a height of 2. Uh, the 2's cancel out, and you'd have a positive 2. Uh, but really what we're going to see is this integral is going to actually be net area. So we're going to take negative one-half plus a two. Now two, of course, is four over two. And negative one over two plus four over two is three over two. The fact that this is positive indicates that there's more positive area than negative in this problem. Let's take a look at 5b. As we go to 5b, a quick reminder. Take a look at this function, y equals radical 1 minus x squared. Very, very famous graph right here. If I were to square both sides, guys, if I'm going to square both sides, I hope you can see something very interesting happen. The square root goes away, and I can add an x squared to both sides, and lo and behold, this is the area problem with a circle. Remember that when you have a circle, if we had x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared, set that equal to r squared, your center would be at h comma k, your radius uh, would be r. 
Well, right here, our center is at zero, zero, and our radius is actually a one. So, you know, we can go ahead and start working this thing out and say, well, wow, center's at zero, zero. I'll go one step right, one step up, one step left, one step down. And sure enough, this is really what I've got. Now, by the way, I'm actually graphing this a little incorrectly. Here's why. When you have Y written this way, guys, this isn't a full circle. This is only the positive square root. You know what? This is a half circle. Y is only positive. Adding to the mystery here, you can say, now, wait a minute. We're only going to be finding that area from X equals 0 to X equals 1. So, wow, look at that. Really, what you're going to see is you've got a quarter circle, one-fourth of a circle in this problem. So the area of a quarter circle, you could say, is one-fourth pi radius squared. And, of course, your r is a 1. And a 1 squared is 1, 1 times one-fourth times pi. Plain and simply, it's a positive value. We've got more positive area than negative. And there we are, pi over 4. You'll definitely be dealing with some of these problems. Uh, take a look here. If you've got a constant, if you just had a constant here, uh, look, just something to help you out. If you were integrating from x equals a to x equals b, uh, but you always had a height of c, y is equal to c. Like if it's a constant number, like y equals 5 or something like that. Well, wow, when you look at it that way, you could say, well, I've got a rectangle. And what's the base? Well, the base is end minus beginning. That's B minus A. And then we're going to multiply it to the height, which is C. So, you know, real quickly, you could, if you wanted to, even work this out graphically. You, you most certainly could. Look. You could say here's negative 1 and over here is 4 and, you know, we're going to have a constant y value of 5. And could we create a rectangle here? You know we can. Uh, how far is it from negative 1 to 4? Well, end minus beginning. That's a 5. And then what's your height? Well, that's 5. So what is this area? It's 5 times 5. Plain and simple. It's 25. Let's take a look at a few other uh, properties of integrals. If you have a constant inside the integral, you may, and this can be very convenient, pull that constant outside of your definite integral. Just work out that integral from a to b of f of x dx, multiply your answer by c. Uh, for number two, you could say, what if you're adding two functions and you're integrating from A to B? Well, you might guess that this could be turned into two separate integrals, and you know what it actually can. Uh, you can get uh, these two distinct integrals right here, the integral of A to B of f of x dx plus the integral of A to B of g of x dx. And then finally, we've got the integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x. Well, in this regard, we'll have from a to b of f of x dx. But I'm going to turn this into two separate integrals. Now I'm going to minus the definite integral from a to b of g of x dx. And there you have it. Guys, we really just have one last major problem to take a look at. And this is known uh, as what some teachers call the barrel of monkeys theorem. Now that can sound funny, can't it? Let's see why. You might remember the toys, the barrel of monkeys. So if we just went to the internet real quickly. And if we typed in the barrel of monkeys, and if we went to uh, uh, an image here, you could see this right here. Maybe you've seen this toy. Look at the monkey's arms. They kind of look like integrals. You see that? I'm running my mouse over it. Look right here. You could connect monkeys together. 
by taking this top paw with a, a bottom paw over here, and then they'd link. Uh, so I'm going to call this the barrel of monkeys theorem, and we're going to see why. The barrel of monkeys, just like the monkeys' uh, paws joining together, I hope you can see that right here, the C up on top will match the C down below. Imagine that's a monkey's paw and that's a monkey's paw. They can latch together to make one long chain. Well, what would that chain go from? From A to B. So look at that. You, you can definitely uh, make that work. Now, what's amazing, guys, is A, B, and C are any three numbers in the interval. Actually, C technically doesn't even have to be between A and B. Uh, we can easily prove that that is true. But what do you want to see? You want to see the addition of two integrals, top boundary and lower boundary match. Then you may condense them and make them one. So, you know, I'm going to look right here at example seven. And I'm going to say, oh my goodness, wow, look at this. Negative 1 to 8 of f of x dx minus the integral of 3 to 8 f of x dx. But guys, the barrel of monkeys deals with addition. Super, super, super important. And, and sadly, this thing right here, that's subtraction. Well, you know what we're going to do? We're going to say, you know, you can change the bounds. Sometimes kids will say, well, why in the world would you do that? Well, twofold. I'm going to say minus this negative, and when I change the bounds, of course, this negative sign is going to come out. 8 was up on top, but now 8 is going to be down below. 3 was down below, now it's up on top. And this can look a little funny, but what's about to happen? You can say, well, wow, here's negative 1 to 8 of f of x dx plus... The integral from 8 to 3 of f of x dx. A, I'm adding, and that's good. But now I hope you can see the barrel of monkeys connection. You can say, look at this. These 8s are the same. And when you're adding two integrals where this top boundary on the first integral matches the bottom on the uh, second one, you may link these integrals together. Start with negative 1. This time go up to 3. And look at that. This is going to be our brand new single integral. Okay. A couple other real quick comments and then we're through. If f is integrable, if we can perform an integral, if we could find that signed area, and if f of x is always positive, possibly also equaling zero, then our net area must be positive or perhaps equal to zero. There's no way it could be negative. One last thing. If you have two functions and if f is always bigger than g of x, then what do you know? If you took the net area from here, integrating from a to b of f of x dx, comparing it to g of x, what are we going to see? It's the same relationship. That net area for f of x must be larger. So that's it for 5.2. Good luck.